the ice that commanders again so soon, I guess what stood out from that first round of tape and, and what you really took away from that? Say that again, sorry, it's hard oh. to hear. I couldn't I mean, hear. The, to play the commanders again so soon, yeah. what stood out from re-watching the tape and, and that yeah. first matchup? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of good feedback, um, a lot of stuff that you can look at and areas of improvement that we're focusing on right now. Um, in the run game, the pass game, like looking at some of the things we did well, trying to build on that, look at some of the things that um, may have you know, not gone as, as well and, and, and try and fix those, make those corrections and, and apply it to practice this week. Mike, obviously there's opportunity in your receiver core. How has Isaiah Hodgins kind of seized that and become a guy you look for in the red zone? Isaiah's done a really nice job, um, not only in the red zone, but uh, being a factor on third down, first, second down. He's, he's, a, he's a really good blocker. He's a tough kid. So he's, he's done a great job. He's done everything we've asked of him. There's a possibility you guys might see Chase Young uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. How much does that change how you approach the game? Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity for them to have a really good player to their defense. So we'll um, have to prep, prep for him and, um, and account for him in both the run and pass game. And really, even in situational um, the positions, third down, red zone, short yardage. So, uh, you know, we have to make sure we, we take care of and, uh, and prep for that whole entire uh, front as well. Yeah, how tough are those defensive tackles to prepare for? Yeah, they do a really nice job. They're aggressive, they're violent. Um, they get upfield, and, and they play almost every, every snap. You know, they, they never come off the field, so um, it's going to be a great challenge for us. In retrospect, how much was Saquon limited last week for you guys? Um, I never thought of it that way. I thought Saquon came ready to play, and we played him as we saw fit. So you didn't have to change anything for him aside from, I, I guess you went with Gary, I guess, for like a drive or two there? Yeah, we mixed Gary in, and, you know, Gary and um, and Brita in there, you know, we mixed those guys in there. They did a nice job. Is there any, uh, I should, I'm not even going to say concern, but um, how much do you pay attention to the amount that you've used him this year? Is that something you look at as a whole? Do you look at it specifically within games of whether, you know, it could be too much on a running back? You know, um, the, way, the way we use really all our players, try and put them in the best positions to be successful, you know, use them to their strengths, um, you know, put them in, in positions where if there's something that maybe a, a little bit of a weakness, try and keep them out of those situations. So we try to use Saquon to um, the best of his, his assets. How much has the instability of the offensive line because of injuries hindered you guys? Uh, and it seems like you might be back to the point where when you started six and one, the same five starters there. Um, how much has that been a problem? I think we've done a really nice job with the guys that have gone in there, the next man up mentality, coming in, playing tough, um, you know, working to get our assignments right and, and, and sticking together. I think that's one bright spot that I really look at from that line. And really, when you look at all the position groups, you know, guys have had to go through that, tight ends, receivers. So um, it's been a great, great job by our assistant coaches and, and coaching staff and getting those guys lined up. When you see um, how maybe the run game's been a little bit more limited in the last few weeks, how much of that do you feel as other teams scouting you guys, having seen plenty of you in the first couple of weeks, and how much is just execution on your own part? Yeah, we, we, we look back and, you know, we look at ourselves first. Um, if the execution was right, or the fundamentals right, was the scheme right, um, those are all things that we evaluate on a week to week. So we take that information, we apply it to this game plan, and, and try and get those guys in the right spots and, and, and seeing it the way that we see it from the coaching staff. Mike, does the, does the immediacy of it offer a rare opportunity in this aspect that normally you see a team, you, you go into it, mm -hmm. and then when the game's over, you're reviewing stuff and say, oh, we should have gotten to that quicker. Mm -hmm. We may, you know, we made the mistake of not putting this in. It would have worked. And then you normally have to wait four weeks. Who knows how that team is going to look. The fact that this team hasn't taken the field since they saw you the last time, I would imagine that lends to what you thought right after the game might still work here. Is that a yes, fair assessment? That, that's, that's fair. You know, we, after we watch the game and review it, we kind of always go around the staff and talk about things we would have changed, things we should have in for them the next time, and kind of build compliments off the stuff we've shown. So that, that all goes into it, absolutely. My favorite question isn't exactly related to the Washington situation, but with your quarterback room, mm -hmm. how, how do you think that that dynamic, well, you know how that dynamic works with a really smart, engaging, experienced guy like Tyrod mm -hmm. 
and I would say a lot of the same things about Davis Webb, you know, contributing to, to you know, I don't want to use the word helping Daniel, but yeah. the whole group and that sort of the esprit de corps within that group. It's a great, it's a great quarterback room, one of my, one of my favorites, um, being, being around coaching as a player. They do a great job communicating. I think they all see the game the right way and see it through the same set of eyes. And Coach Tierney does a great job of organizing them and getting them in the right spots and communicating well with them at practice, in the meeting rooms, and then on game day. Could you see a future coach down the road from that room? Absolutely. I think those guys can do really anything they want to um, as far as football, football um, IQ. They do a great job. And um, absolutely, if they want to get into coaching, I'm sure they would do a great job. Washington controlled time of possession, and they typically do. Obviously, you're trying to score when you have the ball, but are you sometimes trying to also matriculate and kind of hold the ball to keep your defense off the field, or is that not a concern? It's just call plays to score. Yeah, you know, there's there's a little bit of a little bit of both. I think there's you always want to score every time you touch the football, but you also got to understand the flow of the game. Um, there's never a play call where you're like this is play is not going to score. That's not the mentality you have, but. Um, you know, you got to be able to manage the game and call the game that you see is going to um, get the offense to be the most successful. You mean down a lot this week? Yeah, just that time of year. Yeah. What, what did you feel after that commander's game? And three kids under six. <laughs> that, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you feel after that commander's game? Did, did it feel like a loss to you? Uh, you not like quite like a loss, but not quite like a win. Uh, and the other question was, you, your your entire offense in that game was four series uh, where you got really, I think you scored on four straight possessions. And then it seemed like there was a faucet to just shut off. When you look at those sequences, what did you see that caused you guys to just not have offense get into overtime, really? Right, yeah. We, we, you know, there's just a few of those drives that came up. Just got to do a better job, execution, uh, play calling. I mean, all those things tying together. And so, you know, we talk about as an offense, we're all in this thing together and that we're working our butts off each week, each day in practice to perfect those fundamentals, perfect those schemes and those techniques. That way, when you get in those situations again, we can go and operate. Mike, I don't, okay, have, two more. I don't really have hard numbers to back this up. This is more of an eye test, but it seemed like early on you were using multiple halfbacks together more often than you are now, like Saquon in packages with Brieda or Brightwell or on the rare occasion, even all three, yeah. more often than you are now. Is there a reason you've gone away from that? Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me either, but I'd say each week is a, is a little bit different. Each, each team kind of plays personnel groupings different, so we want to make sure that we just have our best personnel groupings, our best people to do those jobs. And, you know, we, we evaluate it every week. We talk, we talk about it at depth. Um, which guys and which spots, and if it's um, going to help us as an offense, score points, get yards, all those things, get first downs, skip third downs. So, you know, we, we really talk about a lot of that. And, you know, not to say that this week may or may not be like that, but it's things that we talk about. And if we can get those guys in more spots to be successful, we will. Last one. If Ben Bredesen does get back, what would he add to your offense? Yeah, you know, I think Red. Fred's done a nice job in practice yesterday. I think just take it day by day. Don't want to get too far ahead on it, but he's doing a nice job. And, um, you know, towards the end of the week, I think Dave's will have a good feel for what he wants to do there.